<laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you've been to Gen Con many years. What have your takes on, on what Gen Con has kind of been like in the history, what it's kind of evolved into, and what it's kind of come to today? Well, Gen Con today is undeniably bigger. The, this exhibit hall is, is huge. And it is too large for any one person to take part in everything anymore. But other than that, it essentially hasn't really changed. It still fulfills the same function. Gamers get together, meet other gamers once a year. They may be the only time they see them. Right. Buy the cool new stuff, attend the demos, sometimes get free copies of a game if you win the demo. Be part of the buzz, the excitement, not just of all the new stuff, but of being together with all gamers. Saying, hey, I'm not alone. I'm not the only crazy in town. <laughs> right. Look how many crazies there are. And we're all in this together, and it's lovely. You know, right. and, and that hasn't changed. Uh, my first Gen Con was Gen Con 8, and then I went to Gen Con 13, so I've been to the Horticultural Hall, I've been to several at uh, Wisconsin Parkside, a whole bunch in Milwaukee, because I, I, think it was, I think it was Gen Con 17 was the first of the unbroken string of Gen Cons right. from then up until now, and um, I can't count high enough to know what, um, I think we're at Gen Con 40 or something, but that's because somebody told me that I was supposed to write something for a book, and I did, for 40 <laughs> years of Gen Con, so there's a book out here called 40 Years of Gen Con, yeah. um, and I presume that I had fun during all those 40 years, right. but they all blend together, and I just remember it as one really cool thing. And you don't realize it, but when you the power of Gen Con, when I go through Indianapolis for any other reason, I fully expect Gen Con to be raging inside this convention center. 365 days a year, morning, noon, and night, and I'm so disappointed when I come by here and there's like it's not. cars or, or uh, who knows, they're modeling women's clothing, something that should interest me as a visual, and I walk in and go, oh, they're not gamers, forget it. What's wrong with this place? Where's my convention? It's, it's sort of like your, like your novels, it's like you want this, you, you picture Gen Con as this living, breathing, always happening world. Yes. But really, it's just one week a year, but you almost, it's such a big impact that oh, people yes. here, you think it's going on. Sure. And, and I I tell people about Gen Con. Uh, I, I work in libraries. I've worked in libraries all my life, so I get to see lots of just normal folks who come in and borrow books, and all the uh, family and, and, and people who I work with, uh, and they say, oh, that sounds interesting, and then I always bring them back a con booklet, and I go, wow. And then I, because we have computers at the libraries, I, I open up and I show them some of those long shots where you can see this whole exhibit hall crammed full of, and I say, see, it's just a little get to Together. And they go, wow, is that really Luke Skywalker? Or are those really the Mythbusters? Yeah. Is, and that's Batman. That's Spider Man. Yeah. You know, oh, those are the Star Trek actors. Uh huh. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, and they're just sitting there. And I said, yeah, most people are ignoring them because it's Gen Con. They're gaming. <laughs> you know? And they go, wow. And then, you know, it's it's just like, oh, all of a sudden, I gotta go. So is there anything you're looking forward to doing? Do you get to do any gaming at Gen Con? Do you have time? I used to. Usually these years I don't because I'm so busy with the other part. Gen Con's for the fans. Right. So it's meeting fans, signing things, talking to them, suggesting ways to use things in the realms or, or modify things in the realms or things they didn't like, how we can change them, uh, talking to them about how their game works and what works for them. To me, that's the fun of Gen Con because right. people come here from all over the world Horrendously long journeys, expensive. Right. They, they they pay even more for the hotel room. They, they walk around going, boy, it's hot. Boy, it's crowded. Where do I eat? Where are the washrooms? And they do all that for that few moments of, wow, look at this new game, or I just talked to Gary Gygax, or whatever. You know. Yeah, exactly. It, that's. Gen Con is for them. It's for their moment. It, it's gamers getting together with gamers. And I spend most of my Gen Con time meeting friends I see once a year. We go to dinner. We chat. How are you? Catch up on their lives. For me, it's the friendships. Because I can play games alone. Whether they're sitting at the computer, I can just set up the board and move the stuff around. Um, like my grandfather used to do with Euchre. They never played a game of Euchre. They deal out the cards. And then they turn them all face up and say, you would have won that round. You would have won that round. And then they pass them on the deal and I used to think what are they doing and then I thought oh 
Oh, that's how they play. They're so comfortable with the game. Or they do all the cards around, and one old man in braces, he's 85 years old, would say, I'm going to go it alone in Euchre, which means you have to have all the good cards. Right. And I think... I sit, just looked at my hand. He doesn't have any cards. Of course he doesn't. He was just bluffing it, just for fun. To play a game that was old hat to him, he's just going to make it fun for that round. And and that's what Gen Con is. You, you just get together and have fun. So that's, no, that's really good. I know you're, you're here to sign books, and it's, it's another thing you're doing. To a lot of people, that's a meaningful thing for them sure. to be able to get, you know. Sure. I wish I had more time, because I don't just want to sign books. I want to write a few more sentences so they get like a, their own story. <laughs> But but these days I can't do that usually because you know there's there's lineups and and you you, right. you can't make somebody wait longer because that means they're not getting to do something else at Gen Con right. and there's there's not enough time and of course by the end of Gen Con by by Sunday night we're all half dead right but exactly the other half of us wants Gen Con to go on for another week and a half yeah. so yeah. we can do all the stuff you know it'd be so much fun if there's only one thing happening in each time slot so you didn't have to miss anything no well, that's good but speak of line we have a, a line of people that are lining up to pick up book and to get you to sign there, and I, I uh, don't want to monopolize their time, um, but uh, the name of the book is Swords of Dragonfire, Ed Greenwood, best-selling author. Uh, Ed, thank you very much for coming on the show. My pleasure.